Well, is an ancient mystery behind the major events happening in our world today? Rabbi Jonathan Kahn shares startling revelations about the gods of old and how the spirits behind them are turning our world upside down. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click on that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, they were the tyrannical rulers over most of the ancient world, demanding mankind feed their insatiable appetite for more. Men built idols for them, sacrificed children to appease them, and committed unspeakable things in their names. It's been thousands of years since their dominating influence, but are we seeing them rise again? Well, today, with the help of our special guest, we're going to find out. First joining me around the table is to Haviland Ford. How are you? I am good. So honored to be back on the Table Talk. It's so good to yes. have you here. Yes. And we love you. And, of course, you hear, you live here locally in the area. Yes, so we're in Fort Worth, Texas. What a blessing yes. to have you. Anna Kendall, yes. how are you doing? I'm just doing great, and you I'm still glad have, to be you here. You still have red hair. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Lamb Brown, how are you? I am good. And, man, what an exclusive topic that Ooh. we're going to be talking about today and our yes. guest. Ah! We're going to be talking about little G gods mm -hmm. <laughs> that which are really demonic. Ancient deities. Yeah, that ancient demonic forces that influenced ancient Israel. Mm -hmm. And now they have come into our America. atmosphere. Yes. Cindy Murdoch, um, it is really crazy. Oh my like, goodness. can you even believe what they're doing to our children? We're going to talk about that in just a minute. No, but. and I'm, I'm ready to get going on this. Okay. It's going to be so powerful. You ready to get going? I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, he is a multiple New York Times bestselling author, and he's here to tell us about his latest book, and it is entitled The Return of the Gods. Please welcome our dear friend, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. welcome. Hey there. Hello. You know, I just had this thought. It reminded me of Marcus, and that is with what you're doing and that you're, you're uncovering and you are revealing truth concerning things that the demonic, it's happening in the demonic realm, and the demons are crying out like Star Trek, come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah. they don't like what you're doing is no. what I'm saying. No. It's another whole level, yeah. but God has anointed you to do it, and there are angels posted around you, I am sure, and prayers. Yeah. Yes. So do pray for Rabbi Khan. Well, were the gods of ancient times merely creations from the mind of men, or was there more to it? The Bible reveals something pretty interesting about this forgotten mystery, and uncovering it could be the key to understanding what's happening right now in our world. So kind of just go back for people who maybe mm -hmm. haven't heard you before and uh, talk about how God showed you things that were happening in the Old Testament with ancient Israel. Your books have then taken those stories yes. and brought to the forefront how those same demonic forces mm -hmm. are working, and it's so visible. So let's just talk a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, well, this is, as you know, yeah. we're watching things go so crazy in this world mm -hmm. that, that even it's not only as we, not only Christians, not only conservatives, even liberals are saying, this is crazy. Right. This is, this is de right. they're even using the word demonic. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. We're, we're, we're transitioning children. We're doing, it's madness. I mean, it's really irrational. What has taken over America? What has possessed America? Mm, yes. And there is something that has. And so what if there was a mystery behind all of it that goes back to the ancient, uh, the ancient gods of the ancient world, of Babylon, of Mesopotamia, of, you know, and that if these gods that, you know, we, we you know, I, I took mythology in class, you know, okay, it's all story. What if it's not all story? What if, what if there's a link? I mean, there's, of course, story. But what if, what if there is actually something real to these gods? Well, the, well, and what if they came back? And what if they're at work now? And what if we could know their names, who they are, how they work, um, and where is it leading us? Where is it heading? And what can we do about it as believers? Well, you know, most, you know, in, in the Bible, most believers dealt with this. They had, they had world, yeah. they dealt with a culture that had gods, you know, with it. Yeah. Well, here's, here's the kind of setup from, from the Bible. Where it's a, it, when it talks about the gods in Deuteronomy, it says that they worshiped the gods. And, and in the Psalms, they offered up their children to the gods. 
actually uses a word that is the word shadim. Shadim means the entities or the spirits. It wasn't mm -hmm. just God's fiction. It, there were spirits behind the gods. And so that's one. And then when they translated that word into Greek, when the rabbi said, okay, we gotta have a Greek word for it, they came up with a word daimonia. We get the word demonic from it. Mm -hmm. And so the, and when Paul says the, the pagans are, are worshiping idols and this, this, he says they're worshiping the daimonia, the demonic. And so what it's saying, the first thing is that there's something real to these things, number one. Um, the, the second thing is that if, you know, if the, all the nations were given to the gods, then they were given to the spirits. And actually you find, when you look at all the pagan world, you actually see signs of possession. Every culture has signs of possession. It's not something you just read in the Bible. All over, they spoke about people shaking, people tremoring, and the, pre, the closer you were to the God, the more possessed you'd be. When, like the, you know, we have the oracle of Delphi, like they all came to the oracle, this woman, she was possessed. She was right. shaking, yes. foaming, and all that. Right. And, so, and so you have this possession. Now the thing is that it's not just people who can be possessed. Cultures can be possessed. Mm -hmm. Nations can be possessed. I mean, look at Nazi Germany. That's a whole other thing. Right. Possessed. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is that that now now what changed? Because if we were alive back then in Bible times, it'd be all over. Gods were ev everywhere you went. There were right. that's weird that they were there. But what changed it was the one word, Jesus, Yeshua. Mm -hmm. He's the only one. He changed it because when when he came, first of all, he had the power to cast out the spirits. We know that, right? But in the in the pagan world, the spirits are linked to the gods. So when he sent his disciples into Rome, they're, they're, it's a clash. You, you, you have the God versus the gods, the spirit versus the spirits. Mm -hmm. You know, when you read the book of Acts, you, you read that, first of all, the possessed woman is following Paul. He casts her out and all the idol makers get, get in an uproar. Right. The other part, the, the, whole, the whole city gets in an uproar because of Artemis, the god. They want to kill the disciples because they're taking them away from the gods. So you have this war going on. Actually, the great persecution of Christians, you know how it started? One of the oracles gave a word to the emperor saying basically, persecute them. Them. It came from a possessed woman wow. speaking for a God. Wow. And so, and the big thing was back, if we were alive back then, it was that Christians, you bow down to the gods or we throw you to the lions. It was all about the gods. But finally, the, the gospel prevailed. So what happened? All of a sudden, the whole culture was cleansed. The gods were driven out. You know, the temples were, were empty. Mm -hmm. And what that means is the spirits were driven out. Mm -hmm. So this is, you put it this way, this was the greatest mass exorcism in the world history. Wow, yeah. it, it, that's what it was. And everywhere the gospel went, same thing happened, mass yeah. exorcism. So when we talk about our culture, our culture is unique. The reason why West is unique, it's the only culture that was exorcised. Mm -hmm. That's why it's unique. So it, this was the, the great exorcism, but there's a warning that Jesus gave. And people hear this and they think they don't, they kind of miss what he's saying. Mm -hmm. He said, if a spirit comes out of a man, it goes to the, to the desert, you know, and, and looks for a place, doesn't find a place. Then it says, I will return to my home, my house. Mm -hmm. Goes back to the man, finds it all, the house is clean and swept, empty. Says, I'm gonna bring my friends back. Mm -hmm. So he comes back with seven, seven spirits, yeah, it says seven more times. demonic than itself. Yeah. Comes back and then Jesus says, the last state of the man is worse than the beginning. So in other words, he's worse being repossessed than he was when he was just mm -hmm. pagan. But he doesn't say it's about a person. He says, so it will be with this generation. Wow. Wow. He's talking about a generation. And so when you take that warning to the largest scale, take it, our civilization was possessed, was, was exercised, here's the warning. If the West, if America, if the West ever turns away from God, mm. the spirits are coming back and they're gonna come back to the culture yes. and they're gonna come back to repossess it. Yes. And they're gonna, they're God, the ancient gods okay. that were, are gonna come back. And so when you wanna understand everything that's been happening since, for the last 50, mm. 60 years, yeah, it's this, it, it yeah. is this. Because that's when we talk about all these things that are going on in our world, like what my mom was saying at the beginning, we couldn't fathom it. So that's why, because it's so much worse than it ever would have been. That's right. Yeah. And so you, right. you actually talk, start out in the book talking about the dark trinity. So yes. lay that foundation. Yeah, yeah, well the question is, okay, if they're coming back, which gods are coming back? Right. You know, and, and, and the gods are because, you know, America is not like it was one nation, it's people of every nation, it's the West. But, but America patterned itself on Israel. When it was created, it was, it was the, the period said this is Israel. So Western culture has Israel in the thing. So if we turn away from God, 
the same gods that came to Israel in its fall are coming back to America and the West. So what were the gods? I call in the, in the, in the return of the gods, I call it the dark trinity. And the first of the dark trinity is known as the possessor. He, he is, his name means the possessor, the owner, the master, the Lord. And we know him in Hebrew, that word is Baal or Baal, mm. Baal. So the first, you know, so you always see Baal at the beginning. He's like that first spirit that comes back and says, I'm gonna bring my friends. Uh. So you always see that, it's Baal and the gods. So the first thing would be that if America ever starts turning, so when did that ha it happen? It happened in the early 60s. We started, that's the first time we said, we're gonna take God out of the school. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take prayer. We're gonna take the word out. Just a little thing, it won't do a big Jinx deal. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, well, we open the door. When you open the door, the gods are coming in. There's, there's, wow. there's, no, there's no middle ground. You know, there's never been in any middle ground. It's either God or paganism. That's yeah. it. So we, they, didn't, if they, they didn't realize what they were doing. So they took it out. So what happens? The spirit of Baal starts coming into America. What does the Bible say the spirit of Baal did? So the spirit of Baal caused Israel to forget God. Mm. So what it's been doing since then is causing America to forget God, forget we ever knew God. Mm. Um, it also says that, that it caused Israel to turn away from the commandments. Well, we literally have struck down the, the Ten Commandments just yes. like Israel did. Um, it's the spirit that, when it, see, the gods are pagan. So if they come back now, it's a little different for them. They come back to a Christian nation, quote Christian, or Christian, they're gonna seek, their mission is to take a Christian nation and paganize it, turn it into a pagan nation. Mm. And that's exactly what we have exactly. been seeing. Yeah. And so one of the things Baal did is he seeks to drive God out of everywhere. Right. You know, remember Elijah and he just, well, what's been happening to America? First out of the schools, mm -hmm. out of the culture, out of mm -hmm. the public square. Out, out of the universities. Out of the, way out of the universities yeah. that were founded for God. Exactly. The yeah. school system was founded for God. Right. He, yeah. Baal is totally changed. Look at how far it's come. There's a spirit that's trying to take God out of anything, out of culture. It used to be, you know, when I, well, this is before my time, but not, not by a lot. But, you know, the, the movies were the Ten Commandments, oh, Ben-Hur, yes, yes, Kovac. Yes. God is, you know, it was all Absolutely. over the place. You know, and look, when you take God out, see, when you, the, what the warning is from Jesus, the house will not stay empty. Mm -hmm. If you take God out, look at what has come into the movie, to Hollywood, mm -hmm. look at what has come into the kindergarten classrooms. Mm -hmm. They would never have imagined it in the 1960s, no. but look where it is. So that, that's what, when Baal comes in, and also, Baal also, he, in ways that we can't even, we didn't even realize, he's paganizing the culture deeply. And that, even wokeism comes from, from Baal. And I'll, yeah. I'll give you an example. When you have one God, there's one truth, you know, and, and that's it. When you have many gods, there's no one truth. Everybody has their own oh, authentic right. truth. truth yes. And so everybody says, well, there's no real truth. It's all relative. So, and also remember, if you're, if you're, a, if you're an idol, if you're a pagan, you, you make your own God. You create your own God. Right. You know? So that means you can create truth. You can create reality. Mm -hmm. That's wokeism. I create my own reality. Mm -hmm. If a man says he's a woman, that's his authentic reality. Right. You can't argue. If he says he's a tree, that's the same thing. That's what's happening in our culture. Right. Mm -hmm. also, also, when you take... You take God out, everything becomes God. Everything becomes divine. Mm -hmm. So sex becomes God. Entertainment becomes God. The computer becomes God. All things become God. And, and the, the name Baal actually means, I mean, it means master. So remember, the idea was, you know, everybody do your own thing. You're going to be free. We're going to give you free. Women, you're going to be free. Men, you're, gonna be, you're all going to be free. What's happened is we're more in bondage now than ever. We are driven. We are driven by bales. We are yeah. driven by drug. We are driven by addiction more than ever before. That's what happened, in, including technology. I know you want to get to yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I do want, right quick, like, we yeah. will go to technology, but yeah. we also have to mention in the 70s, uh, 73, Roe v. Wade. Oh, it's coming. So that's coming 60s, with the God. That's one of the gods. The, the 70s. I mean, oh, so oh. we can see every decade oh, where yeah. they entered through another door. Yeah. It, it gets it gets more and exactly more. Because mm -hmm. you look like, in the 60s, you have the first steps, but now look where we are now. Every single thing we're seeing now is linked to that. Is it because yeah. they don't stop? Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, the idea is, well, you know, just be tolerant. You know, it's never going to stop. They're going to keep going to get, and, and now we're seeing the deeper things of these gods mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, and that's, we just, we're just talking about, and we can only, I, I'm, I'm blessed to do this because we get into it more, but yeah. we can only touch on these things. Right. But here's another thing of paganism when it says that people, when they make the idols, they will worship. 
the works of their own hands. Mm -hmm. So what is happening to America is we're worshiping the works of our own hands. Mm -hmm. when, when, the, when Paul spoke on Mars Hill about the gods, and he says, you know, you're not supposed to be worshiping the works of your hands. The word he uses in the Greek is techne. We get the word technology, technology. from it. Technology. So it's saying that we will actually be worshiping our own technology. Wow. It will drive us. Yeah. It will, will become addicted to it. So the greatest technology, the greatest idol is the computer. That, that pe I mean, we know yes. it's a tool, yeah. but yeah. we know people are addicted the to it. The greatest idol right here. Yeah. 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 I mean, they made it. Yeah, we, yeah. Use, it, yeah. we use it for, we use it for God and that's good, but yeah. we, but people are addicted. All, it's addicting it's our children, addiction. it's addicting everything. And it, notice something else it says. It says, those who make the idols become like them. Mm. So what's happening is humans you know, are becoming less, less human. Right. They're becoming less able to interact. They're becoming more like the it's computer. True. While the computer's becoming more human, people are becoming, this is an idol. And the other thing about, this is what, see, everything goes back to the Bible. The other thing is that with an idol, you know, they make this idol, and they say this idol is God. They actually said the idol was God. So there's a, there's a confusion in the pagan world that between reality and image, this, this idol is God. So what we're seeing is the confusion we have now virtual reality. Mm -hmm. It's confusing reality. The yes. virtual becomes real, and the real become, fades out. People are so in their computers that the real becomes virtual. Mm -hmm. That's all paganism mm -hmm. yeah. in, 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 the, in an end time form. Wow. Yeah, number two, which yes. is the enchantress. That's big, yeah. Which, just blows my mind. I mean, yes. We talk about it, all of you at the table, like 10 years ago, we, we could have never, mm -mm. ever imagined yeah. what we're seeing yeah. with our children. Yeah, yeah, and, this, and, that, and that's kind of like the later stage of it, yeah. but all, it all came in with Baal, yeah, it all came exactly. in the 60s. So Baal comes in, and when you read the Bible, you know, it says Baal and Ashtorah. It's always, it's Baal and he had a, he had a wife. And, and I mean, and, and she's all over. I mean, she wasn't faithful, so she was all over the place. Mm -hmm. But but she's called in the Bible Ashtorah, but she's all over, she, she's called in the Middle East. You've heard of all these names, Ishtar. That's where you get Ashtorah, mm -hmm. Ishtar. Also, when she got, went into the Greek lands, she became Aphrodite. And then when she went to wow. Rome, she became Venus. But she's all over. And, she's, and people wonder where those names come from, yeah. like in mythology. Yeah. But they're actually spirits behind them. There's, Definitely, because you see the same, the same attributes in every land, the same thing. Yeah. So she's the goddess of sexuality, uh, but of, of sexual immorality. She's the goddess of self-gratification. She can't control herself. You know, she's also the goddess of destruction at the same time. Mm -hmm. And she's called the harlot or the prostitute goddess. Mm -hmm. So, so, because she was a prostitute, you know. So, so I, I, in the book, I call her the enchantress because she's also called the one who enchants the enchantress. But I'll call her Ishtar because that's the most kind of common thing. So she, so what happens is, first you have Baal, then when Baal comes in, the next thing to come in is the goddess. So look at what happened in America. We start turning away the early 60s. What happens? We would expect something to happen that would revolutionize sexuality. That's, we have the sexual revolution. Absolutely. Happens like clockwork. Yeah. And, and if Baal is, you know, Baal, and they're, they're all trying to possess America or possess the West. And so Baal tries to possess it the way we said, get just get God out and then materialism, all that. But, uh, but the enchantress, Ishtar, does it through sexuality. And that is that she starts overturning the biblical sexuality, biblical values about family, gender, sexuality, marriage, and starts replacing them with pagan values. Everything we say, the new morality, it's all pagan. It's what they had back then. Yeah. So we start seeing fornication. We start seeing marriage starts getting weakened. We start seeing extra, we, and, and, and the other thing is she hated marriage. She's a prostitute. Prostitutes take mm -hmm. marriage out of the marriage bed, and they bring it into the culture, into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So what happened? We watched America become sexualized. It's all over. Where did that come from? It came from the marriage covenant taken out. And so when you do that, you not only sexualize the culture, but you weaken marriage. Mm -hmm. So she hated marriage. Mm -hmm. So what's happened since the 60s? Marriage has been weakened. Yes. Marriage has been broken. People, broken families, broken homes, broken children. Mm -hmm. That is the sword of Ishtar. Yeah. That's what she does. In Greek, she was called, the, the word for prostitute is porn or porne. Wow. So we get, we get the word porn from this goddess. Her literature is the first pornography in the world. And then we and, link it with technology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's what be, I was yeah you know, it's too. almost like it's almost like remember what Jesus said, when they come back, they're coming back stronger. Of so now they've got the web. Now they got the internet. Now they got the you know porn. Back then on she on your you, phone. Yeah, on your phone. Back then she just had 
stone. You know, yeah. they can make yeah. stone pictures. You spread all these mm -hmm. stone pictures. Mm -hmm. Now you have technology. So pornography, and actually pornography means, the graphos of the porne means the writings of the prostitute. Wow. And the, the first ones we have is of Ishtar. So, so it's the word eros we get erotic from. Eros was actually a god. And it was born, the mother of Eros was this goddess. So this goddess produces porn, the goddess produces er erotic, erotic. And so she possesses people by pornography. She possesses people by this whole spirit. Mm -hmm. And look at how many people are addicted to that. Oh my goodness, that she seduced, yeah. she's a seductress. She's also the goddess of witchcraft. She was the goddess of spells. And at the same moment in the 60s, when this whole sexual revolution comes, you have the revival of witchcraft in America. Never happened before. Right. When you take out God, this is what you got. Yeah, so we have we have the new age, we had all the new all these things. And so you have you have I share we have more witches in America now than we have Presbyterians. Wow. Um, and so there's a spirit of witchcraft. <laughs> a spirit, and it's not just in the witches, it's in Hollywood. It's a whole spirit of this mm. new age and all yeah. that, you know, yeah. you know. So she and she's also the goddess of substances, of intoxication. Um, and, and so what do you have at the same time? You have you have Sexual, sexual revolution, you have uh, the drug explosion in America. We have, we have more addiction now than ever. You know, more, you wouldn't think it, it's, we are more addicted. This is the spell of the goddess. This is, this is the enchantress, she seduces. Yeah. In this part, I call her, I call her the, the transformer because it's mm -hmm. such a, it's a whole nother wow. realm, mm -hmm. uh, but it's her, it's her. When, when you look back, when I, you know, and I had to, Joni, I had to like look at the ancient inscriptions and I was like, whoa, you know, what's there? And when I look back about the goddess, it says, she says, I am a woman, I am a man. Mm. Wow. She was, she herself was, she was, she was, you know, female, but she had masculine attributes. She was a, she was a warrior. She was a fighter. She was, she was violent, you know, mm. but she was female. So she actually was androgynous. She was both, so she's the guy, and another, in a hymn to her praise, it says, they said, you are the, you are the one who turns a man into a woman wow. and a woman into a man. Mm. And, and so, and so, so the first thing is, She's not, so, but it doesn't happen at the beginning of sexual revolution, but then as she keeps going, it starts going here. But, but you could see this, we could see this, even in, before it got to where it is now, mm -hmm. there was this spirit to try to, what she did is it says she, she, she masculinizes women. She makes women, she defeminizes them. So since the 60s, you see this movement to defeminize women, to take away the, the nature of women, take away mother, long before it got here, same spirit. So to take away that, women, you don't need men, women, your own, you're your own man, your own, you know, you do your own, um, that you have radical feminism at the same time. You know, she, she, she actually rebelled against her father, who was named Anu, who was the head of the gods. And she rebelled, and, and, and so it was a patriarchy. You have all the things like, we hate the patriarchy, hate the patriarchy. Well, that came from her. She was the one who rebelled. But then you have the feminization of men. It says, mm -hmm. it says in the ancient tablet, it says she grinds away the masculinity mm -hmm. of men. Wow. So notice what we have in our culture. I mean, we all know it. It's a, it was never before. It was, it's that there's this spirit where, I said before that, if, if a man is masculine, we'll say that's toxic masculinity. We gotta hate that, hate the, hate the men, you know. Yeah. If a, if a woman is masculine, well, little bravo, you yeah. know. What is that about? That's yeah. the spirit of the goddess mm. who can merge his sexuality, confuses sexuality, and all this has been happening, we're leading up to where we are. By the way, the, you know, we mentioned that gods always go for the children. Mm -hmm. So here's another thing. Women, girls are being trained from the beginning to be, you don't, you know, you don't need men, you know, you, you be your own thing, fierce, you know. Men, boys are saying, don't you know? Boys are falling up, are falling up behind. You know, um, and they are, they are. The, the natural thing to protect is is being channeled into video games. The natural thing of mm -hmm. of sexuality is being channeled into pornography. So you have this all being trained from yeah. the beginning, and it's affecting everything. It is. Everything. And it's going to get everything. much more explosive even when we continue. Okay, so we see that these ancient gods are causing our world to be crazy. Yeah. What would you say to Christians that are living in this yeah. age? How can we be? Encouraged? That's why I wrote the. That's why I wrote the. Return of the gods. First of all, you have to see what you're dealing with because if we're fighting and we don't know what we're fighting, we're so not going true. to. We're not going. So um, but number two, you know, then at the end, I always get with hope that listen, that's where we are. That's where it was in the Bible. That's what Elijah dealt with. That's what Moses dealt with. That's what Paul dealt with. We have the greater power. Yes. We have a much yes. greater power. Amen. We got to know, but we got to fight the fight. You know, yes. so that's what it's all Amen. about. The third one of the dark trinity is the. It's called the destroyer. 
And this is the one that, you know, if you, we were in the pagan world, it was it was common to offer up human beings. I mean, all over the world, not, not just in one place. You know, oh. the Germans did it, the Polynesians did it, it was all over. But also it was common to offer up children. Yes. Everywhere, because and children are defenses. That through abortion. They're doing it, and you, and you know the pagan the pagan mindset is is it hates the weak. You know if you're old or young, you can get destroyed. So it was not safe to be a child back then. And so the thing is that when when Israel remember when Israel turned away from God, what did they end up doing? They actually offered up their own children. I mean it's hard for us to imagine. They went to the altars. They put a valley of Hinnom filled with these altars of their children's blood, and that's why they were destroyed. You know. So you have the third the third the destroyer who is Molech, and Molech the God who demands the children. So what this means is that the only thing that ended all this, you know, you know, to thank God for God, the only thing that ended it was the gospel. The gospel is the only thing that ended human sacrifice, ended child sacrifice, that's why. So, but the warning is, Jesus said, if you turn away, if the house becomes empty, you get God out, Moloch's coming back to America. Moloch's coming back to the West. And so it's just like clockwork. First you have Baal turning away. We, we didn't get to the second one yet. It has to do with sexuality. Then it leads to Moloch. Moloch comes in, 1970, abortion on demand in America. 1973, it's all over the land, Roe versus Wade. So we are actually, this is a pagan thing. So we are actually doing what the Israelites did. We are actually offering up our children. We don't call it that. You know that abortion only ended really because of the gospel. It was abortion, abortion itself and infanticide. Now we're moving from abortion and they're pushing it to infanticide, that you can kill a child even after birth. Mm. That's in those laws. Right. You know, they try to deny it, but it's in the law. So this is the spirit of these destroyer. And, and all these gods lead to death. They try to make you destroy yourself. So yeah. for parents to destroy their children. So when I looked, when I did research on like how the ancient sacrifices happen, um, it's the same way. They involved the parents were offering up, so then they would give it to the abortionist or the or the priest. Mm -hmm. They'd have drum, they'd have music to drown it out. Well, we're drown, we drown, you know, there's this is a horror. Our culture drowns it out so you can't even know what's That's going so on. True. They said actually the poor, the poor children were the ones who were offered up more than any other yeah. because they actually paid poor people to get their children. Mm. And so, so you know, you know, Moloch is a racist. Moloch is a hater of the poor. Moloch a hater of all, all those who, and so what is Planned Parenthood? What, what's happening right now? Yeah. More poor children are are offered up than any other, yeah. other children. So good. Yeah. We are out of time. There, and there's one really important point that I want you to take away from the program today, though uh, they seem to have a lot of power it's just like Jonathan just said, it is nothing compared to the might Amen. and power of our yes. God yes. and the power of the yes. Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that the demons tremble before God because they know he is all powerful and has all authority. As a believer, you have that authority in yes. him yes. and you can operate in, a, in, in not fear, but you can operate in love and power and might and know that God is with you yes. and you can stand up to some of the, 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 the things that are happening in the world. You can speak out. So I want you to be encouraged today that the Lord has you in his hands. And if something that we've talked about today has stirred your heart, maybe you didn't realize you were struggling with fear or maybe you've not totally surrendered your heart to the Lord. Um, that's the most important decision you'll ever make. Mm -hmm. And that is to invite yeah. Jesus into your heart yes. and life ask him to forgive you of your sins and then be empowered to fulfill your destiny here on the earth. We have prayer partners that are standing by. They're incredible. They'll pray with you. You can go to daystar.com, click on prayer, send your prayer request in. We pray over all of those that come into Daystar. But I want you to understand something today. It's just like Rachel said, we need hope. And this yeah. is the thing. Yes, we can learn mm. about all these things. Mm. We barely scratch the surface, mm. by the way, this <laughs> book. You need to get it. But, you know, we can hear all of this, but still not be moved because light, the mm. light of God is so yes, much more yes. powerful yeah. than the darkness, okay? Yes. So don't be afraid. Mm. And I'm telling you, God wants to use so many of you to get involved mm. In, mm. in politics, to yeah. run for the school board, to speak yeah. to teachers, to uh, speak to people yes. there uh, in your workplace, and to stand up for truth. Yes, do it in a loving way. You'll notice that the other side's hateful. Mm. We, we can't yes. be that way, yeah. but we can speak the truth in love, and we've got to do that. Well, I want to thank Rabbi Jonathan Kahn for joining us. Be sure to pick up a copy of his new book, The Return of the Gods. It's available now, and for more, you can visit him online at booksbyjonathancahn.com. Well, let us know your thoughts about today's discussion by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing from you. Be encouraged today. Listen, stand up, folks. This is the time to stand up. God has a mighty army. We've been sleeping 
It's time to awaken and to fulfill the end time uh, harvest yes. and to allow God to use us in a powerful way. I'm, I'm excited about what God's doing. So don't be afraid. Just know God is still on the throne yes. and he's coming again. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.